It's the most wonderful time of the year, and that means we are bringing back our holiday recipe favorites. And we are heading back into the kitchen, my kitchen in this instance, to bring you some of our family's favorite holiday dishes. And this morning, I'm showing you what makes my mom's gingerbread cookies so amazing. My mixer. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome inside my kitchen, which will, in just a matter of moments, smell just like the holidays. To me, the holidays smell like fresh gingerbread cookies because I've been smelling that scent since as long as I can remember. My mom has been making this recipe literally my entire life. I have never tried it before, but we're gonna figure it out together. If you have any questions about the way this whole process works, you can just call my mom, which I just did. Mom, I made a batch of these off camera and I'm pretty sure I used the wrong measuring cup. What happens if you put like way too much flour into this recipe? Um, they get really stiff. They're really, <laughs> they're really dry, sweetheart. You can't, you can't do that. You have to use the wrong measuring cup. But are they still edible? <laughs> um, they're better uses probably Christmas ornaments on the tree. But um, yeah, I guess they could be. I'll give them to the dog like we do when I, you know, make them too dry. The recipe itself is pretty simple. Step one, get yourself a cup of butter one cup of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, one egg, one cup molasses, and two tablespoons of vinegar. So once you've got all six ingredients into your electric mixer, which by the way, I don't own, and had to borrow from my lovely co-anchor, Emma Jade. Thanks, Emma. You're gonna wanna mix this up until everything is pretty much well mixed together. Just use common sense. We have just five more ingredients to add until our dough is finished. We have to add them while this is still mixing. So just set the mixer on its lowest setting, let it do its work, and then add the other stuff. One tablespoon of ginger, one teaspoon of cloves, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda, and five cups of flour. Once you've added all the flour, this mixture gets very thick. I was warned by my mom not to let the mixer run for too long after you add the flour, or it'll burn the motor out, which I would never want to do to poor Emma. So we have to mix the rest of the way with our hands. Okay, mom, so I've just finished mixing all the ingredients together. What do I do next? What do you do next? You're going to put it in wax paper and chill it for three hours. Three hours? Yeah, three hours. Is it worth the wait? Thanks for your help. I love you, Mom. I love you too, sweetheart. I can't wait to see you. You want to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the countertop to make sure your stuff doesn't stick to it. Once you take the dough out of the fridge, you just want to roll it out until it's nice and thin. Then get out your favorite cookie cutters and start cutting. <laughs> Set the oven for 375. Once the oven's preheated, you want to take your tray, throw it in for exactly six minutes. Mom says not a moment longer. Once your cookies have cooled off, decorate them with your frosting of choice. My mom gave me a recipe to make my own frosting, but this was way cheaper and way easier. Happy holidays, everybody. Pretty good. Better than I thought. <laughs> that was the bad, was that the bad mix? I'm not gonna tell you, I'm not oh. gonna reveal my TV secrets. I did mess up one of those batches, but it was edited out, hit the cutting room floor. All right, if you wanna make my mom's gingerbread cookies for yourself this holiday season, I strongly recommend them. The recipe is posted to our website, 12news.com. Coming up tomorrow, Jen Wall shows us how to make her family's green bean casserole Ooh, with a twist. Yeah.